Hello, and welcome to Keep the Channel Open. My name is Mike Sakasagawa. This week I'm talking with photographer Samantha Jabal. When I first met Samantha back in 2014, she had just started showing her work, and in the short time since then she's come a long way. In 2015, she was named one of the Critical Mass Top 50, and she was also selected for a fellowship from the Houston Center for Photography. Samantha's work is raw and vulnerable and powerfully honest, and I am really happy to have gotten the chance to talk with her for this week's show, and we'll hear that in just a few minutes. If I could just take a short detour for a sec, though, just bear with me for a minute. I wanted to talk a little bit about the show itself. Now, one of the big things I'm interested in with this show is collaboration and community. And that, you know, when I talk about community, I am talking on the one hand about the artistic community. And so that's why I'm interested in having these conversations and sharing them with you. And a collaborative spirit is why I ask all the guests to bring their own topic for the second segment so that they can explicitly have a say in the direction of the conversation. But I'm also interested in finding ways to create a community and collaborate with you, the listeners. After all, you are as big a part of this project as I am, and I'm really interested in knowing what you think, in finding ways for you to engage with and participate in the show. What is it that you're hearing in these conversations that's striking a chord with you? What are the questions that are coming up for you that you'd like to get a response to? I'd really like to know. And so I'd encourage any of you who have thoughts about anything talked about in the intro segments or in the conversations themselves, please write in and let me know podcast at keep the channel open.com. And you know, maybe one thing we can do is when you write in, we can take some time at the top of the show and read those comments and questions and discuss. So back to Samantha Jabal, her work really knocked me off my feet from the moment I saw it. She has an ongoing series of self-portraits, which she calls self-untitled. And through those photographs, she takes her inner life and struggles, her emotions, and she shows them to you in a way that makes you really reckon with them. That's really the power of art, isn't it? Because we don't know what it's like to live someone else's experience. We don't know what it feels like to be that person. But through pictures like these, we can get a glimpse. Her artist statement for what she calls phase one of the series, gets right at that explicitly. She says, This is not another fat kid story. There are times when I do assume that role, but it does not define me. I don't have the body I have for no reason, but it would be all too easy to extend blame. What people don't often see are the functions of obesity. I hide behind my size, mask vulnerabilities, and create walls as a way to protect myself. Something I have learned and portray in my art is that being vulnerable and forming connections have created a new function and even healing. I share my body and my story not as a way to seek pity or define myself as a number, but as a venue for a viewer to say, I've been there too. I would really encourage you to visit her website, which I've linked in the show notes, and look at these pictures, read her statements. There are now three phases of the series as she's gone through a series of changes in her life, both internal and external, including undergoing gastric bypass surgery at the end of 2014. The project has grown and changed with her, becoming a journey into self-acceptance, but never in a way that's just the expected narrative of obesity and weight loss. There's a lot going on here, and I think these are photographs that are worth your time. On top of that, she's also recently started making a series of short videos, which act as a sort of extension or complement to her photographs. And there are five of them so far as I'm recording, and they're really well done. I've included a link to her YouTube channel in the show notes, so have a look at those as well. And now, here's my conversation with Samantha Jabal. I mean, you've been pretty busy lately it seems like yeah um i'm yeah just working like i'm just trying to make a lot of work mm -hmm. um it just feels like i don't know there's times where it just kind of spills out of me and i feel like i just need to make work like i just went um to northern california to visit family and just make work there mm -hmm. and I just didn't stop the whole time. I just, I would see something. What's so cool about, um, I hate to say it, like losing all this weight is now I have this opportunity to try absolutely everything I can think of, which is 
so fun, you know, like to be creative and let that extend through me and not be tired and exhausted and just mm-hmm. like really make work. And it, I enjoy it so much. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can, I can tell. And, um, <laughs> and you know, the new work is, is just amazing. You know, I've been a fan of yours for a while now. Yeah, I remember when we met in San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> so a... nice. To meet. Oh, well... I just appreciate that because, like, at that uh, uh, at that um, review, it was just so difficult for me to you know show my work for the first time, and I always appreciate when you know like the the small connections with people, mm-hmm. um, and just connection in general means so much to me. So that always means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, and I think. Um, so that was like a couple years ago. It was like uh, your yeah. last, I think. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, you've definitely come a long way in that time. You, I, mean, <laughs> I remember that was, you were saying at the time, the first time you'd ever shown your work. Um, mm-hmm. And and now you uh, were named last year the Critical Mass Top 50, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um you won a fellowship to the for the Houston Center of Photography, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that for a show in May, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's it's well deserved, I I got to say. Thank you. Yeah. I remember um at uh, at one of the little uh you know, um mixer things that they had there, the reception things um I was talking to a couple of other people and, and, um, and, and you were definitely, your name was on a lot of people's lips at that, <laughs> at that thing. Um, I think that a lot of people were very impressed by what they saw. And certainly I was, <laughs> um, one of the things that I, 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 you know, I've, I've been watching your work develop, um, over the past couple of years and, you know, one of the things that I thought was so interesting the first time I saw it was that, like that thing that you just said about 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 these moments of connection, that mm-hmm. for me is always something that's really important with with yeah. my work, and and there's a thing that for me, I I often feel like you know nobody knows who I am or no, nobody sees me and that, that if they can, can see my work, that that's something to be seen. And then I, and I felt like that was something with your work, um, that was, that, that seemed really, um, like urgent about your work, that there is this, this feeling of like, of, of, you know, with your pictures, there, there are these things that, you know, people who are, are overweight are often Mm -hmm. sort of overlooked, you know? Yeah. But then with your pictures, you're, you're, you're really like, you know, making yourself visible in a way and, and not just your, your, your external self, but your, your internal self. And, and that, I just think that is so, amazing and really important too yeah i guess it just like um it it just doesn't feel like an option not to be like brutally honest Mm. of how i feel (laughs) um and you know what's really crazy that i've kind of realized and i know many other people have realized it i guess is um to be seen is the exact same thing as being heard for me Mm. um And, um, it was kind of weird, you know, like being severely overweight, you're overlooked. And at the same time, you're seen more than anything, you know, you stick out like a sore thumb. And as much as I would have liked to blend in, people noticed me, Mm -hmm. um, for all these reasons I was really uncomfortable with. Um, and, um, I look back at that person and I just feel sad. Like Mm -hmm. I feel sad of what I went through. Um, and, um, it's always, it's like very, I I know I have this weird perception of myself and like, um, and it's not always accurate to how other people see me. And, um, 
something that I keep getting like the feedback from people is, uh, well, especially those that are close to me is that they really saw me and, mm-hmm. um, it, it's insane to me to like wake up to the fact that I am this person that everyone else has seen, you know, for so many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of waking up <laughs> yeah, um, over and over again to just new awarenesses that I think that like if, if my brain really let me know these things previously, I don't think I'd be able to handle it. Like, yeah. I think I'm slowly feeding myself, you know, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, yeah. Information about me that mm-hmm. I just didn't know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, and I think, I mean, you're not just feeding yourself that you're, 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 you're allowing us, the audience, a chance to experience that your inner life as well. And there's so much, you know, um, vulnerability, there's pathos, there's, and even, you know, rage in, in these photographs mm-hmm. that, that I think a lot of people, you know, wouldn't, you know, it's not the kind of thing that you would necessarily see just walking by someone on the street. And I think, you know, um, uh, you know, f- fat shaming is something that is still, it's like one of the last things that people are really kind of comfortable being awful about, you know? Yeah. And, and people don't really take the opportunity or take the time to try and understand, you know, what that, what that means to the people that are receiving it. And, Uh you know, but it's something that the emotion of that is, I mean, it's a very powerful thing being, seeing it, expressed visually in that way. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think that it's, it's important, you know, and it's, it's an important thing to, to, that's really what the power of art is, is to let you be able to, you know, walk in someone else's shoes for a few minutes. And, and those points of connection are, are, are really what allow us to, to, um, move forward, you know, and to grow. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, a reviewer said to me once, um, and I like felt half offended because I'm like, you know, putting down my work and my work is just so my life. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, well, how do you make me care? Like, how do you make someone care? And it really, like, I just didn't know how to answer that at the time. And I've thought, about it nonstop. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and I think really it's about being vulnerable because when you're vulnerable, people can see that you're human Mm -hmm. and that we're all human. Um, and we all make mistakes and we all are, you know, going through life, not really understanding it yet because all of these things have never happened to us yet. You know, Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing about, that's so constant in life is everything will change all the time. This moment will never happen again. It's already gone before I know it. Um, and has already changed, you know, something has already changed again. And, um, I don't know. I think, I think just being honest and vulnerable is so important to connecting with other people. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, that's when I was, really young, I always searched for a connection because I just didn't have it. Like I, I didn't have a lot of friends. Um, and my family life was really complicated. Um, and, uh, so I really tried to find connection, you know, through other things. Um, like, and really it was art and fantasy and just imagining at first. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, connection is, it means the world to me, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 Man, it pisses me off when that, you know, comment, uh, you know, uh, how do you make me, I mean, you, I feel like you should be more than half offended by something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I get that kind of comment sometimes too. Um, mm-hmm. and I feel like, I feel like in my case it's, it's, I don't, I mean, I don't know if it's ever really, um, you know, uh, an appropriate thing to say, but I feel like in my case, it's at least a little bit appropriate just because, you know, I'm working in a subject matter that is definitely a lot of people have done it before, but, Mm -hmm. and I feel like what you're doing is not something 
that you've seen a million times, you know? And it's, it, it is something that's different and it is something that's so emotionally loaded and it's something that, um, and it's even very topical, you know, it's, it's a conversation that people are starting to have more and more in the past yeah. few years. So like for someone to come along and say, well, why should I care about this? I mean, it's just, I mean, that's almost intentionally obtuse. I feel like, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, I think, um, the conversation is so important. I'm realizing more and more like mm -hmm. just how we talk to people. Um, because that, that's a lot of, I feel like the reason why I did it and like still do it is I am not okay with the way that people are talked to, especially people that are overweight. Just, I think how people talk to one another in general, but especially people are overweight. I think the conversation needs to change. I think the way that doctors speak to People who are morbidly obese is pretty terrible mm -hmm. um, and really needs to, you know, fully change and we need to be more supportive. And I think the conversation needs to, you know, change in, you know, in, when someone is gaining weight, instead of saying to them, you know, like, you know, you're really gaining a lot of weight and I'm concerned for your health. Well, maybe the better question to ask, I don't know, is what's wrong? Like, mm -hmm. how are you feeling? And mm -hmm. really see what the cause is instead of like, you know, this external alarm, because I think it's just an external alarm. A lot of times it's like your body is your voice. Mm -hmm. And so when I put excess weight on it, it's like kind of this alarm of like, I need help in this way. And mm -hmm. I, it relates back to, you know, the same thing of, um, being seen as being heard. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I think what I realize now is like with photography, I can have this frame that's all mine mm -hmm. and I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. Um, and it just feels so nice to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all mine to just, you know, e express myself. <laughs> yeah. And so much about my work is just really about feeling and honoring how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's the thing that um, I'm really happy to be seeing more people sort of, um, you know, mining their interior lives and showing us that, you know, these really personal expressions, because I think, you know, for me, that is often where, um, you know, the really powerful art is made, you know? Yeah. Um, and like you said, this, you know, being, being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to, um, to really, you know, open yourself up. It's a scary thing, but, um, especially, you know, when you have to deal with rejections, like any artist always has to deal with a lot of rejections, but then, you know, and that, that the, when your work is very personal, like, like ours is, that can be tough, but then yeah. when you do find those points of connection, it makes it that much more meaningful. Uh huh. Yeah. I um, I gave a lecture um last week um, and I was I, f I feel so self conscious talking about my work sometimes because it's my life. Like I feel almost selfish, you know. Like, why don't you just listen to me and talk about my life for a little while, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and I was talking and there was a girl in the back who um had had gastric bypass um, and said and it just like ripped my heart in half because I wish more people talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, she said, I had no idea that people felt this way or were going through this too. You know, like she just felt alone and like no one else could understand, you mm -hmm. know, like what an incredible change it is on every single level mm -hmm. um, and what that's been like and how to swallow. Like I, I keep telling people that it feels like I was born at 27 <laughs> and mm -hmm. I am relearning how to do everything. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it um, now is um, – really trying to figure out, okay, how do I not react to the present with all this baggage I have from when I was overweight and how that affected me and 
how much of a wall I just want to put up because I don't have it anymore. I don't have this protection and of excess weight. And it really was protection. It just kept me at arm's length, literally from everybody and even myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's part of why connection is so important to me too, is like, I feel scared of it in a lot of ways um, of people really seeing me. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, a, you know, I, I like, figuring out myself more and my patterns and why I do certain things Mm -hmm. and why I pick certain people and why people pick me and um, like just how, you know, my past plays out in my present relationships. And um, I think it's just a way to figure out how to accept myself more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that made sense. (laughs) No, it totally makes sense. Um, Okay. No, because, you know, I, I have, a lot of really similar issues, um, you know, going back for myself, um, like it's, it's interesting. I've had a few people, not a lot of people, but a few people look at my work and, and, and tell me that, that, that it looks like I'm, I'm like a, like obviously a very wounded person. And I, I, yeah, I was initially like, like a few times, like I've, the first couple of times I heard that it was like really, I was really sort of taken aback by that. Mm -hmm. And, and, but, you know, I was realizing, you know, in a lot of ways that's kind of true. Um, my issues were different from yours, but I, I dealt with a lot of, um, you know, when I was, when I was young, um, you know, especially in middle school, high school, I, I dealt with a lot of bullying and, you know, a certain amount of racism and, um, and, it's it it really is profound the way that those kinds of experiences shape the way you see yourself and the way that not just the way you see yourself but the way that it colors all of your interactions with yes. everybody yeah to feel isolated in that way and the measures that you take to protect yourself going in that time and how that spills over even I mean, for me, high school was almost 20 years ago now. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more than half of my life has elapsed since, since things have gotten better for me. And I still carry around a lot of that same pain and a lot of that same, you know, fear and, um, you know, listening to you talk about being nervous, giving a speech, you know, giving a talk about your work. I think, you know, a lot of that sort of, um, you know, imposter syndrome kind of thing Uh really for me, at least a lot of it comes out, I think out of the sort of emotional trauma that I had as a youth, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that everyone always told, not everyone, but you know, the, a lot of people when I was young told me, you know, that I didn't matter or, you know, that I was, you know, nerdy or that I was ugly or whatever. And, 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 and so then, even though I have evidence to the contrary now, and I have almost 20 years of things being pretty good for me, it's still hard for me to accept that, for example, that I, that, that it's okay for me to have a podcast, (laughs) you know? Um, well, you're a great conversation. Just so far. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) But I mean, I think that that is really, um, you know, when you talk about the therapeutic power of art, I mean, that's definitely something that I can relate to that, you Mm -hmm. know, spending so much of my youth feeling really overlooked and isolated, finding those, the, the, a way to, to be seen and, and to sort of work through my ideas and work through my feelings in the context of art. And sometimes it feels selfish to do that in front of other people, but, but then, you know, people will, will say, just the same way they do with what you just said that 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 when you see someone else going through the same thing that you're going through that really is helpful to to you you know yeah it's um yeah it's kind of like being of service in a way i guess it's like uh just you know, getting outside of yourself can help somebody else but it's also selfish cuz you're really helping yourself too you mm-hmm. know Um, I have been like, I did this big mind map recently. Um, and 
came across this kind of idea of like self perception and all other perception of me are in this weird way mirrors of one another. Um, because, you know, your first mirror, um, you have is, you know, the caregiver initially. And so if that caregiver, um, wasn't there, wasn't present, then maybe you have, a you know, a smudge on your mirror or something like that. Hmm. Um, so I think after a little while I started figuring out that my body has been my mirror. Um, and so I guess I changed the mirror somewhat with my body. Um, but I don't think it's all about the body. Um, sorry if I'm being a little confusing. Um, but, uh, I, I'm trying to figure out like, if I really have control over my self perception and what this actual mirror really is, is it my body or maybe it's just kind of accepting it and just acknowledging that it's there. Like I, I keep trying to think like, how do I let go of all this baggage? And maybe it's more about just accepting that it's there and kind of learning how to deal with it of just being there, you know, mm. and instead of this idea of letting it go and that it needs to be something that, let go maybe i just adjust to it being there and that's just a part of me mm -hmm. um and you know i listened to um i think the first podcast and the artist on it I, i'm sorry i forget her name but uh she said i like to um like err on the side of that everything in life that happens to me is somehow good for me mm. um and I am an extremely pessimistic person, and that is so helpful for me to think um, that somehow it could be the most horrendous thing that happens to me, but maybe it you know got me to the next place of learning um, or growing and gaining new awareness about myself yeah. um, and I'm trying to really stick with that um, because it's difficult you know going through all this change all the time and um it it is helpful to um for me to think of maybe it's just helping me grow um and figure out how to accept my past and be okay with it yeah um and i've i just um i think what i try so hard to do in my photos is like figure out the key to really accepting myself um and being okay with me. Um, and it's, it's not easy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that though I, I do, um, detect that in the way that your photographs have changed. Uh, and you know, there's the, the literal change or, you know, the, the sort of, um, physical change, I guess, as your body has changed over the past year, um, that that is obviously in the photographs, but the feel of your photographs has also um, developed quite a bit in that time. And then especially as, you know, more recently you've started incorporating, um, um, you know, projection and stuff like that um, uh -huh. to to sort of juxtapose the, the past and the present. Mm -hmm. Um you know, there's definitely a real feeling of a journey to your more recent work. Um, and, and I think that, you know, as like, there's definitely a feeling of, of more confidence of more, um, um, self-acceptance, as you say, in, in your more recent photographs. I am really trying to do, uh, yeah, I'm, it, I, yeah, it, I, um, I, th like I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, about like my brain not letting me see certain things is, um, around like earlier last year, around April or so, um, when I had lost a bit of weight, mm -hmm. um, I started looking at old photographs and had had this extreme struggle with looking at them. Um, my mentor is actually shooting a simultaneous series of me. Um, and it's kind of like I am 
um, uh, I forget how he worded it, but it's like his perception is from the outside in and mine is kind of the inside out. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he, you know, showed me all these pictures on a rail of, of what he had of me so far. And I broke down. I had a huge breakdown after that. I had, and what I realized is I had no idea that I looked like that. Um, and that I had gotten that big, um, and that, that things were that out of control. And, um, slowly over time, uh, I really started to see myself and what's really crazy as you know, the more weight I lose, the, the more elastic my skin becomes. And if I like, I really like the idea of exploring my skin and, um, what was there and what it, uh, represents to me is like this massive amount of fear. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I think it, it, um, Oh, I was photographing myself this one time and all my skin like came away from my body mm -hmm. and I saw myself literally for the first time. It was like, I saw myself, uh, yeah, what I, what I would have looked like if I had grown up an average weight. Mm -hmm. um, it was devastating. It was devastating. Um, and I think I realized that I just didn't know myself and hadn't seen myself ever mm -hmm. uh, until most recently. Um, yeah. yeah, I think, um, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it can be a difficult experience finally, you know, looking at yourself honestly. And when you talk about, um, fear, it's, a, that was something, um, in the first video that you did, um, where you talked about, you said, you said that and you're looking straight at the camera and you say, I'm so afraid. Yeah. And to me, that was really striking because I've always found, your work and your willingness to put yourself out there to be like, to me, you've always just seemed fearless, you know, like <laughs> you, like you're, you're because of the nature of your work and the fact that it's so personal and it's, it's so tied up with your emotional state and, and all of that. And, and just being willing to, to put that out there and let everyone see it. I mean, that, that is an intensely brave thing to do, I think. Thank you. I think, well, I think the reason I know I'm so f fearful um, is because I'm so angry. Mm -hmm. um, I just think, like, this massive amount of anger I have is just, it's just fear. It, you know, anger is never really the primary reason. It's always this secondary emotion of what's really going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I am such a feel fearful person and, um, I think it's so important to, for me to just put that aside, to be honest, like I would never be honest if I just stayed in the fear. Mm -hmm. Um, and like to really be honest, like in my work, I just like, I couldn't. I feel like I had to show myself nude. I feel like I had to show what was real. You know, it's just mm -hmm. real. And yeah. like I've photographed a bunch of different people lately and they'll say things like, oh, use Photoshop or, you know, make me look pretty or make me look like I've lost 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, why don't you, why, what's the problem with looking at you? Like, why can't you just show what's real? Yeah. Um, like, I photographed myself for a long time and didn't show myself what was real. Like I did things to, you know, like either a headshot or just things to really not look at me. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important to look at yourself and to really reflect and figure out what your patterns are and how you interact with people because, you know, how you interact with someone just even in the car is so representative of how you, you know, react to people as a whole and how you react to yourself. And it's just this like micro situation of such a bigger picture, which I think matters. And mm -hmm. I think that if more people looked inward, maybe we would treat each other better. Yeah. And, 
and if if we had a little more awareness, you know, um, and and really giving people the benefit of the doubt more often, mm-hmm. um, which I hate doing. Like, <laughs> um, I a perfect example was you know ordering um, dinner with my girlfriend, and the um, it was on its way, and the the app closed out early Mm. um and immediately i'm like this asshole like doesn't want me tracking him you know like totally immediately went there and then i said out loud maybe he just accidentally hit the button um maybe he's on his way and just can't find it you know something like that and that's exactly what happened Mm -hmm. (laughs) and if i had this photographer that i love her perspective brooke shaden she is oh, so yeah. passionate and I love her perspective. It, I, it's why I'm drawn to her. Mm-hmm. And she says something to the effect of, you know, when you expect the best from people, they show you, show you their best. Um, meaning I think, I think what it means to me is like when you give people the benefit of the doubt and really expect, that they'll show you something nice, maybe that's what you'll start to really see in them. Mm -hmm. And it's more about your perspective than what they actually did. Um, And I think it's just, you know, changing your perspective. Everything is so much about a perspective shift. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, benefit of the doubt is, um, is something that I, I feel like is kind of a, it's a tricky thing. I was just actually reading, (laughs) yeah, yeah, um, I was, I was just actually reading this, uh, I think a week or two ago, I was reading this thing about, about, um, benefit of the doubt in the context of sort of, um, you know, bias and male supremacy where like, where it's one thing to, to be willing to offer, someone the benefit of the doubt like in the situation where you're talking about is is one thing but then in a different case where it's something where um oftentimes when a man will get called out online for some for Mm -hmm. having said or done something you know offensive uh that one of his responses will be hey you know i'm a good guy um you know i have a whole history of being a good guy why can't you just give me the benefit of the doubt Mm-hmm. And that doesn't really acknowledge the sort of um, the power differential inherent in those kinds of relationships mm-hmm. and, and the sort of structural um, um, consequences of, of, you know, that, I mean, that's being invoked as a way of, uh, you know, needing to comfort someone, you know, of, 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 a, of a guy feeling like he needs to be comfortable it's okay. A, it's a tricky thing. Like I know like I've done stupid shit online and said stuff that I later regretted and been called on it and um sometimes been called publicly by friends and that was also my immediate reaction like, you know, hey, we're friends, like can't you why'd you have to do this? And, like can you give me the benefit of the doubt? Uh-huh. And that's not like for, it's it's an interesting thing where like like you want to be generous to other people, but sometimes at least for in some situations you can't, you shouldn't, or at least I shouldn't um, like insist that other people extend that to me, you know? Yeah. That's my first thought is that no one does. (laughs) Um, I'm very, uh, you know, defensive in the fact that I'm just like, I assume that, you know, I assume which case scenario is just how I am. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, what I have found for myself, it is not helpful for me to just believe that, you know, like I, as, as hard it is for me, you know, to not, it, it's more helpful to me to think that way. I guess it, um, I'm trying to think of how to explain it more. I guess it, I, I am more unhappy when, 
um, I spend my time angry at people um, mm-hmm. for like you know thinking a certain way about people. I think it it is helpful to me to um, I guess have a more uh, like yeah just assume the best instead of I don't know if that made sense. No, um, it does. I mean, I get where you're coming from because I I, I I go through that as well. Um, you know that that when like I spend a lot of time on Twitter, right? And, okay. Um, well, yeah, I retweet a lot of your stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. It's 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 one of the uh, just you know. Uh, I'm always thankful for the medium of text and the internet because it uh, has given me the opportunity for people to think of me as funny. It's not something that ever happened before. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, but, you know, if you spend any amount of time on Twitter, I mean, you're going to, you're going to run up against stuff that um, is going to piss you off because people Mm -hmm. on the internet are oftentimes awful. Um, Very. (laughs) Yeah. And, and that's something that where when you talk about benefit of the doubt, it's like it operates in, in this way that's that's like on can be almost like on a operating one way in a personal level and operating a different way on a political level, you know, because uh-huh. like the, the thing I was mentioning before is more like 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 insisting when when like if i fuck up then and and i insist that people you know you know give me the benefit of the doubt even though i fucked up then that's that is is operating in one way but whereas mm-hmm. like if i see other people um doing something that would normally bother me or that i would find um um you know offensive or 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 would make me angry that 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 like you're saying it can it can be on a personal level very freeing to to not as- immediately assume that everyone else is an asshole all the time yes <laughs> it it i i've spent and i still am but i've spent so much time you know really giving people all the rent space in my head about like, well, this asshole in this car, this person in this grocery store. Um, and you know, maybe that person in that car had been driving, you know, from San Diego all the way here, or Mm -hmm. maybe, um, you know, something terrible happened to them today, or maybe they're just a dick. And, (laughs) but I, I like to think that maybe, they just didn't know, you know, maybe they just didn't know that they totally inconvenienced me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, my, my grandma is, um, she's going to turn 95 this year. And Mm -hmm. I interviewed her, asked her a bunch of questions. Um, and something she kept saying, um, Oh, I'm losing it. It's it's gone. It's leaving. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, I had a total brain fart. Um, oh, it maybe it'll come back to me later. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. Uh, totally lost my train of thought. Um, gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, so um, why don't we just switch for a second and maybe it'll come back but um okay i did want to talk a little bit uh, about your 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 recent video work um it's a it's a new thing you've been doing this what like a month maybe uh yeah like the more regular videos yeah Um, because i did a couple before but they yeah they were just they got difficult to do and i think just a little bit painful and now i feel more willing and open to do them Mm -hmm. and um i i think i've seen two so far is that right yeah Uh, i think i made two maybe three okay yeah yeah. three i think yeah okay um i'll have to go back and check because i I can't remember i can only think of two off the top of my head but anyway um i was really interested to sort of get at what what it was about video that that was drawing you in 
that, uh, you know, as opposed to like, you're, 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 you're definitely, uh, an amazing still photographer and, um, you're welcome. (laughs) And the, the, (laughs) you know, working in video is like a completely different thing. It, it definitely adds a different layer having motion, having audio, you know, having your voice in it. Mm -hmm. What was it that, made you want to step into that new medium? Um, so, uh, being heard is so important to me. Mm -hmm. Like one of my biggest triggers in life is not feeling heard. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can look the exact same as being misunderstood. It's like, I might as well not even have said it. Mm -hmm. Um, and what has been really nice with video is I feel like it's this way to hear myself. Like, even if it's just me, like this last video I did felt like a conversation with me and I was just kind of telling myself things. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like this really like almost ultra validating way for myself, you know, to hear me mm-hmm. and to like, to honor my thoughts and like how I really feel. Um, Mm. and like the last video I did feels like it just fell out of me. Um, and I like, just, I, I don't know, like how I've been shooting lately. And then, um, just in general is I feel like I just have to make work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I felt this about this video. Um, Cause so much of what I do is like, I imagine in my head and I really like scenario rise. I don't, I don't that's definitely not a word, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like just think of different scenarios over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so it's really nice to like, I don't know, make a, make it into a movie and like make it. Cause like, I feel like I imagine in a movie a lot of times, <laughs> um, and so it's really cool to like actually make it and create it on a screen and, um, and, uh, the music is so important to me. Like, I think it's so much of a story and, um, it's been really fun to like, um, mess with music and like add certain things. Like the, the last video I did, I added all the breathing to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then, uh my previous video i had like taken the bass track and um and put another track over it but differently um and so it's it like usually what i do is like i pick a song um and then i edit around that um Mm -hmm. and it's been really fun you know but i just love it it's so hard too because i just I'm not used to, you know, flexing that muscle. Um, and I don't have much of a, uh, film muscle yet. So Mm. I'm just trying, you know, some different things and it, it just feels nice, you know? Yeah. I was surprised when you said, um, cause I asked you about this on Facebook when you posted the most recent one that, that you said that you don't have any real training in this kind of thing because, um, I mean, I have a teeny little bit of, of, of training in, in, in video and multimedia and, mm-hmm. um, and the way that you're, um, assembling these things is, is, is pretty sharp. Um, it's, Thank very, you. it's, it's, you know, the cuts that you're using and, um, and, um, the way that you're assembling it all together, um, out of different, different bits of footage is, is very effective it's and particularly your use of audio um you know like you were saying um the way that the music or in the most recent one the sounds of your breath mm-hmm. how that i mean one of the things that 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 music can really do um to add to uh, a, a film or video piece as opposed to what you can do in stills is that it it you know we're really conditioned um, as people to understand emotion musically mm-hmm. and, um, and it makes it a lot more concrete. Um, and even, um, the way a lot of the, um, the, the, the clips that you're choosing, um, could have a different feel 
depending on what kind of music or audio you're using. And yeah, definitely. The, yeah. The way that you're doing it really provides a lot of emotional context for these pieces and it's, it's done really well. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely something I've been excited to see you exploring. Thank you. It's been, yeah, like it, a lot of fun. And I think what I realized also is that, um, the score is so incredibly important. Like I'll, um, I was trying to make a video a few months ago and I picked the music and I kept replaying it over and over again. Um, cause yeah, when I see, when I listen to the music, that's when usually I start to really see it come together. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, the more I listened to that song, I was like, oh, this is just so cheesy and dramatic. <laughs> and I just didn't want to make, you know, like a movie that was like, woe is me. Look at how dramatic I can be, you know, mm. like, and, um, I just, it's just not the message I wanted to give. And, um, I just didn't realize like how crucial, you know, the music really is to conveying a feeling and setting the tone literally. Mm -hmm. Um, and how important that really is. Yeah. Um, and like giving a message, you know, through motion. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, the music, it, the last video I made, um, it means the world to me. Um, and it really felt like, um, my heart. Um, I just love it so much. Yeah. Yeah. And rightly so. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not just me saying that you had, you had a lot of people telling you the same thing. Um, you know, even, uh, you know, people who are certainly more, more, more important than me telling you that. <laughs> so you're just as important. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm really not fishing for compliments here either. <laughs> um, I'm not um, fishing to give them either, but they are well deserved. So. <laughs> well, <thank you. laughs> um, tell me a little bit about, about, um, this, uh, this exhibition that's coming up in May. It is okay. So it's a exhibition, um, yeah, in May, <laughs> uh, in Houston at the Houston Center of Photography for Photography. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm really nervous, but at the same time, really excited. It like it's beyond me that like anyone would want to go see a show of my work and it's like what I said earlier you know about like me talking about my work it's just I feel like such a dick because I'm just talking about my life you know and um and I have a lot of fear that like I I just so badly want it to be a way to hear my myself you know like it it just keeps going back to like feeling heard in the right way because i i've spent so many years like feeling unheard like even to myself um and i um i just wanted to honor that and and tell my story like it you know because it's my story mm -hmm. um and it's it's important to me um it, that I guess I'm heard in the right way. Um, and, uh, but then again, I have no control over that, you know, whether people hear me in the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. I think that's like where a lot of my discomfort comes from, um, is like feeling like people don't hear me in the right way. And I think, um, part of, uh, yeah, what it is now is just putting it out there. And if, people hear me then they hear me if they don't they don't mm -hmm. um yeah and... at the end of the day that's really all you can do as yeah artist. yeah um yeah you, you can never just... really control what people are going to take away from it you can only control what you're saying uh-huh yeah. yeah and um yeah i guess it's a lot of like just holding on and wanting that control um and uh I think that over time it you know it's 
it's just letting go of a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, not having that like last ounce of control of like how other people will receive it. it you know, I can only do so much. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it, they have a right to have their own experience too. Um, and like, see it how they need to see it and take away what they need to take away from it. Or maybe it's nothing at all. Yeah. Um, but I, um, like one of the reasons that I feel like I, not why I started, but just at least kept going, um, is just wanting people to understand more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, yeah, I guess about being heard. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's that your, your work, uh, the things that you're trying to say, they're definitely in there. And so, you know, I am just, I, I think you in a really short time have accomplished a lot and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the future brings. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah, I, it, I I had this conversation with somebody and I think I just realized oh it's just like my well my grandpa is writing his memoir right now mm-hmm. um and, and he says it's because we made him do this um <laughs> my grandma's is called you made me do this <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, what I think I realized over time it's just an ongoing memoir as I do it I guess mm-hmm. um and maybe I just don't look back on it later and, and well, I guess I have like a more accurate probably, um, view of what's going on or maybe it's even, you know, maybe it would be more accurate later, but it just feels like, um, an ongoing kind of like conversation with me of mm-hmm. just ta- talking to me and maybe I'm just learning how to talk to myself more nicely um, yeah. over time. And I won't do it perfectly every day, but, um, like I, I think, uh, my fear was always that like people would see that I had lost weight and then I just never wanted to give the idea that like I lost weight and it equals happiness because I am very clear and have always been clear that if I am unhappy big, I'm going to be unhappy small. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, I just don't want to give the message that like you lose weight and all of a sudden you're happy. Like, of course things are so much easier. It's just not even a contest of how much easier life is. And, um, and just things I don't even worry about anymore that were a huge deal to me forever, like chairs. Um, because a chair is, you know, this, this space that is predetermined space um, of who's supposed to sit there. Mm -hmm. It's like someone has already decided that, you know, this certain type of person can sit in this chair and that's really the only type of person can sit in this chair and it's all about fitting in. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, (laughs) yeah, I, I love having now the conversation with myself, you know, just, just talking to me and, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, I mean, those, I mean, these are things that I think a lot of people are never even wouldn't think of, you know? And, and mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, I remember you, you, you brought up the, the thing about chairs in, in your first video and, um, and it, and it was like, that's not, you know, to someone who hasn't had that experience, it's not something that would occur to them it would be it would be a problem for anybody and that's yeah. why having having all of these different experiences be part of art and be part of the conversation is really valuable you know even if we are just talking about ourselves it's something that is that's adding perspective and letting other people in and yeah, yeah there's a lot it's very it's really it's really valuable and you know the the same thing too about what you were saying about about, you know, weight loss, not equaling happiness is it's another thing that I think a lot of people, um, really oversimplify and you are engaging with the complexity of it in Mm -hmm. your more recent pictures and in your videos. And, 
and that too is again it's it's a it's a valuable perspective and having that part of the conversation is important yeah i think it's like kind of similar to like people just thinking the grass is greener Mm -hmm. like always the grass is greener um and yeah i just i would i just don't want um If anything, I, it's just real, you know, like I, I just want it to be real. Like I think, uh, like a lot of reason, um, like diets in particular is it's all about getting there. It's like thinking that when you get there, that's where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you know, the grass is greener kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, but it's not about getting there. You're missing, you know, already being there because mm. they're in here kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, if you really think about it, um, yeah. you're all, you're already there cause you're here. Right. Um, and I feel like if people stopped, you know, thinking so much about, um, getting there and realizing that it's already here. Um, I don't know, maybe I, I just, really I'm stuck on the idea that of just waking up, you know, and, um, and I think a lot of people just have no idea they're asleep. Yeah. I had, ha- I had no idea I was asleep. Um, and, um, and how, how do you know, you know, like, how do you wake up to life? How do you wake up to yourself? How do you wake up to all these different things? And waking up looks different to everybody. Yeah. Um, it's everybody's different experience. Nobody's the same. Um, right. And so it's, yeah, I just, photography has been, you know, this way to wake up. And um, and I refuse to go back to sleep. I just, now that I know, like, how do you unknow something? Yeah. Um, like, how do you let, how do you just forget it? But, you know, mm-hmm. like, how do you just, uh, and I can't unknow. I just don't want to unknow and I want to know myself. Like I can't walk around not knowing me anymore. Um, yeah. it, it's just so important. Um, cause I feel like w- it, it's so true, you know, like loving yourself first is how you love other people. And like, how do you truly love somebody else if you don't even know you? Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I'm really focusing on is, um, just accepting me and, um, and the world, you know, Mm -hmm. yeah. (laughs) ideas I have about the world and like how angry I am about certain things and, um, and just, yeah. Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you're letting us all come along for the ride. I think, um, anyway, I, I, I think this is, uh, it's been a really great talk and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you so much. It's been really fun. Like I, something that, you know, is really nice at reviews too, is like just having the conversation with people Mm -hmm. because like every conversation that I have, I gain a little bit more awareness and I learn a little bit more and it's like somebody else's perspective and their, you know, experience in life and and how they interpret what I've gone through and you know how they see me or it it is so helpful to me and I thank you so <laughs> <laughs> it really is like it it's true it it you know conversation and just you know what I said at the beginning is connection is so important um and it's just like this space to be human with somebody so yeah well thank you yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that was me and Samantha Jabal. Really great talk. Uh, we mentioned in the show she has an exhibition coming up that's in May with the Houston Center for Photography. Opens May 13th and runs through July 10th. If you are going to be anywhere near Houston in that time, please do check that out. Uh, HCP is a great organization and admission is free. As you heard, uh, there's a lot about Samantha's story that resonated with me. If you have a story that you'd like to share or any questions, please do write in podcast at keep the channel open.com. You can also find me and the show on Twitter at channel open pod or on Facebook at keep the channel open. 
And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. That really does help the show. Our theme music is by Poddington Bear. You can find more of his music available for licensing at soundofpicture.com. Uh, next week, our guest will be author Robert Jackson Bennett, so be sure to come back for that one. And until then, remember, keep the channel open. Thank you.